Welcome to another video from Dr. Lot. Got any couple of interesting topics to talk about today. And um, yeah, I'm just going to my next job, so I guess you guys are all riding shotgun. Which is interesting in itself. I mean, the expression shotgun you know, makes out as if somebody's driving and somebody's in the passenger seat shooting out the window. I mean, that, that stuff doesn't happen. Well, not in Australia anyway. Sounds like a quick way to uh, get locked up shooting shotgun out the window. But anyway, moving on. Okay, so I recently, uh, well, yesterday I went and got my brakes fixed on my car. So basically, I went to uh, the tyre shop and I said, look, can you check my tyre pressures? Because tyre pressure is extremely important on a vehicle. Check my tyre pressures and uh, check my brake pads because my car's done uh, 32,000. And I'm thinking to myself, the brake pads with all the heavy duty wear that we have during the traffic that we're in, we start, we stop and brake pads wear out. That's what they're designed to do. We also carry a lot of weight as a locksmith, so there's a lot of weight that's coming to a stop. It's gonna put a lot of pressure somewhere, and most of the time that's gonna be on your uh, brake pads. So I thought to myself, get new brake pads, get the tires uh, rotated, rebalanced, and that should solve the problem because I had a little bit of vibration on heavy braking. So I thought, okay, no worries, I'll do that. So I looked up the price of the brake pads and I went with Bendix Heavy Duty, about a hundred bucks a set. Front, hundred, back, hundred, plus a little bit of time to fit it. I thought, okay. The next thing is um, I'm driving an iLoad and um, it's a diesel. And I want to keep it good because I really don't want to buy another motor. These things are well known for doing motors. And a lot of people have had iLoads where they only last a hundred thousand. They do a turbo, they do a motor. I'm trying to look after this one because it's an expense and if you look after it, it'll last longer. So I do my oil quite frequently, five to 7,000 K. New oil, new filter, bit of, bit of additive. So I thought to myself, look, it's only done 4,000, but it's a bit noisy on startup. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dump some different oil in there. And um, the other stuff was full synthetic. I went for full synthetic again. So if you've got eye loads, that's the best type, go for full synthetic. So I went for full synthetic, uh, Penrite stuff, about a hundred bucks for 10 liters. These cars, they take 7.5 liters. The oil, oil filter itself was only $17, uh, so that's quite cheap, so it's worth replacing. So I got the oil replaced, and that wasn't a big deal. I got the brake pads replaced, that wasn't a big deal. The big deal was, is that when I came to pick up the car, I find that they had actually replaced the rotors, the actual disc rotors. And I'll, I'll show you more about this, and uh, we're gonna compare some prices and things. Now, hindsight's always 2020, and had I have known how it would have worked out, it, it would have been a different um, scenario. But the end result is that I got all the parts replaced, uh, the rotors, the pads, uh, the oil, and um, it cost me $1,400. I was expecting a $400 bill max, but it cost me uh, $1,400 approximately, and I could have done better. I definitely could have done better. And now knowing what I know, I'm not gonna let that happen to me again. Now I'm gonna tell you guys how that happened and why that happened and explain it to you. And you can leave your comments down below. Uh, so, you know, that way we might be able to get to the bottom of this and maybe a lot of other people, other lot of locksmiths out there might not get stuck in the same scenario because there's nothing worse than getting taken for a ride. I feel I was overcharged by about $350, but going over the statistics and all the rest, it's, it's hard to say whether it is an overcharge or not, because I know what they paid for those disc rotors. But there's two points to this. We're gonna go over the price and I'm gonna show you how you can save three to $400 on your next um, brakes and brakes pads. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push forward this point. And that point is that whenever a job needs extra parts and the bill's gonna double or triple, it's only the right thing, it is the right thing to do to talk to the client. When, when I dropped my car in and said, do brake pads, they should have been straight back on the phone to me and say, hey, listen, you need brake rotors as well. It's gonna cost you this much more. How do you want me to proceed? Instead, when I went to pick up the car, they said, you needed rotors as well, and that's an extra $700. So that really gave me the shits because I wasn't prepared for that. Uh, I wasn't expecting to spend that. And had I have known that it was that much, what I would have done is probably left them on the car, not done the brake pads, not done the rotors, Right, driven it around until they got a bit worse, probably another 10 or 15,000, and then I would have you know, replaced it later on because I didn't really want to replace it straight away because I was getting a small, small pulsating on braking, only on heavy braking. So if I was to be nice with it, I could have probably you know, lasted quite some more time. 
So I'm going to go through all the stuff that I've learned about brakes because a lot of people drive eye loads, a lot of locksmiths drive eye loads and it takes two seconds to tell you guys what I found out because that will help you uh, in the future when you have your, when you have, you know, taking your car. So everybody with an eye load probably going to get the same deal. But the one thing that really pissed me off is that if things change, you've got to notify your, your customer and if the price is going to double, you've got to notify your customer. And if you don't, you're just going to shock them. And they're going to end up as, as pissed off as I am, especially when they come to, you know, settle the bill. And it's a lot more than they expected. So that there's something. I always do it with my customers. If they call me in and they say to me, look, change four locks. And I get there and the lock's falling apart and it's completely broken. If it's not what I've quoted, $55 to recode that lock. If it's not going to be that, I have to stop, turn around to them, say, look, I can't recode this or it's not worth recoding you're better off with a new one and it's not going to be 55 it's going to be 155 at which stage they can advise me which way to go if they want to if they don't want to pay that then i won't you know do the job i won't re recode the crappy lock so they've got that choice or if they do want it replaced i'll just replace it or i could just put it back together and no charge on it so I, i'm giving them the choice of how much they want to spend and which way they want to approach it rather than just putting my wares on their door and um, hitting them with a massive bill so I think that's really not the right way to go oh we're just about to go on the M2 this is the M2 in Sydney guys they've revamped it and all the rest and this road is the only well this road is the road that I've traveled the fastest in my life on and that was with another locksmith another locksmith I was with in the early days uh, had a had a red Commodore and I, I tell you I, I think we were hitting close I know we were hitting over 200s on this road and uh, yeah I never want to go that fast again in my life so if that bloke's out there shout out to you and yeah I'm not getting in the car with you anymore on this road and uh, this road straightens out a fair bit but I could not even see um, when we were going so fast I could when I was looking ahead I could not see enough room to make that car stop so that's how fast we we're going you know stupid things you do when you're young so um, yeah there's no use speeding anymore. Now I just relax, I put the radio on, I just cruise. And even now it's a 100 zone, I'm just cruising on 80, 90, you know. We've got load in the back of these cars, and you've got to remember this too. These are not speed cars. So all those days of going fast and all the rest, if you want to go fast, buy yourself a Porsche or a Ferrari. But if you're a locksmith on the road, there ain't no point going fast because you're not going to get there much faster. And all that crap in the back is going to come compacting you. Like a sand, you know, a can of sardines. You get squished. I've got a ton of stuff in the back. So basically, if something comes in front of me, all that's going to push me forwards, and it's push, um, being pushed backwards from the front. The crumple zone is me. So take it easy out there, guys. All right, now let's get into the nitty gritty of how I can save you some money. Oh, look at that. He's got his carpet hanging out the back of his van. So that's the same type of van I'm in right there. The bad thing about doing that, and I'm going to give you another tip, Driving with your door open or driving with a smashed window, not a good idea because the fumes from the exhaust actually get sucked back into the cabin. I learned that when I had a, um, a van which had a broken back window. So you've got to pressurize it so the actual air is getting uh, blown through the car. If not, as you're driving, the exhaust is going to curl up and it kind of gets sucked into the cabin. So you end up uh, you know, nauseous and sick after your trip. So not a good idea to do that. Right, now let's go into the nitty gritty. I'm gonna show you how to save money on your uh, brakes and rotors and identify the qualities in them as well so that that way you know it's gonna help you. And one thing, hindsight is always 2020. You know, we've got a couple of these vans and had I have known, I would have just pre-ordered and had the parts sitting on my shelf and uh, you know, if, if they were needed, I would have had them in the car and say, do that. And that's, that's basically the moral to this video. You know, hindsight's always 2020. And if you've got a couple of eye loads in your locksmithing fleet, then do what I'm saying. I know you don't want to buy parts uh, when it's not needed yet, but eventually you will need it. With brakes on the Hyundai's, my car's only done 30,000. And, you know, I thought it was a bit funny that the brakes needed to be done, but no, they do wear. They do wear disc, brake discs are actually softer than what they used to be. Um, so the technology and all you think, oh, it's going to be harder and harder. No, they're better technology. They've got cooling vents, they've got drills, they've got slots. Uh, they're softer, less squeaky, all this sort of stuff. Special uh, coating so they don't rust, all that sort of stuff. But they're actually soft. So you've got to keep that in mind. Things have kind of changed with uh, brake pads and brake rotors are consumables, not covered under warranty with uh, with your car they're just consumables so let me get into this let's jump back into the computer and I'm going to show you what's what what's good 
and how to save some money on basically uh, your next brake and car service. And this this is basically going to help just about every person out there who's got a, a um, well, you can do it with just about any car. You can really do it with just about any car. So let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so this is the invoice right here, and uh, I managed to get it down a few more hundred as well after I was telling him, look, that's a large bill. Didn't expect that. He started, oh, okay, I'll take this and I'll round that off. Anyway, let's look over it. Uh, super service. Super. Grease oil. I didn't think he would have used any grease, but anyway. Grease and oil service, 20-point safety check, blah, blah, blah. Basically, yeah, righto, 80 bucks. That's if all of that was inspected. Um, probably not. I think they just write that on there. That's just one of those, like our service call. You know, we put that on there. That's to start off with. Fair enough. They've got to pay the bills. Uh, the oil, that's fine. Um, it's marked up by about 20 bucks. No problem there. The next next one is the Ryko oil filter. $16. That's a good price. Environmental levy, $8. I guess that's what they call getting rid of the old oil. Pretty sure people come and take it away from them for free, but let's throw in eight bucks for that. Labor charge, $80. Replace front and rear disc rotors and brake pads. I can, I, can, I can live with that. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. DBA premium disc brakes, disc brake rotors. Two of them at $161. Uh, DBA premium disc brake ro rear rotor. Two of them at $190. Now, that price there, I was looking at it thinking he must have charged me twice for two sets. But no, he's charging that price. And this is the thing that I couldn't understand is that why would, and he buys it from this place here, there's the part numbers on the left. Why would you pay such a premium price from your supplier? If you're in the industry and your supplier is charging you this type of price, why would you buy from them? Why wouldn't you buy it from somewhere else so you can make more of a markup? because this is already a very largely inflated price when I can show you what's what. And the heavy duty disc pads at 115, I'm happy with them, mark up at 20, 30 dollars. Right, so now let's look at how the disc brakes work and what they call them. So I just did a quick, quick Google search. I looked up the brand DBA, they're good brakes. I'm quite happy with them. I went to their website and I started doing some research around about uh, what's what and how many different ranges there are. And I found that, you know, basically the drilled and slotted ones are better. Uh, you're going to get better performance out of them. And the ones with the thermal marking um, are of the higher range. This one here is basically the lower range. It's, it's uh, silver, like spray painted silver. That's what I've got on uh, my car. And I thought to myself, how many different variations of this silver is there? So I called the manufacturer. I asked them, there's only one variation of this silver disc. So if it's BDA end shield with an E at the end of the part code, then you basically got the bottom of the range, the street series. Now for those type of prices, I should have probably had the 4000 series. 4000 series was drilled and slotted. Uh, they're not actually harder. They're actually softer. They give really good performance. They might not have lasted any longer, but they would have been really good performance. You'd probably get more braking, quicker stopping, and they might not heat up as much in heavy traffic. I'm not technically, I don't know exactly what they'll do, but they're better. So they're worth almost twice the price. So when I was looking over the range, it's very hard to know what's what and which ones are which, because when you look at a, a rotor, you know, it's very hard to know which one they've actually put on and which one they're selling you. So I went over and I called the sales rep. He explained to me that the silver ones are basically at the bottom of the line, 4,000 series next one up and 5,000 after that. So I looked over the specs of the 4,000 and they're actually suitable for people uh, carrying large, uh, large vans, heavy weights, towing, high, high heavy usage on the brakes. So it would have been worthwhile going for something a little bit better uh, rather than the bottom of the line because I do carry a lot of weight I am a 80 and these these HD ones, these 4000s, probably what I would have expected. But I wanted to make sure I didn't get the, the 4000 series before I spoke to my mechanic and, and spoke to him. And the way to tell the difference is the black center. If yours has a black center or a black center, it's a 4000. If it has a silver center, it's just a standard EU street series. So that is the actual difference right there. And all the part numbers and all the different suppliers use different part numbers. 
I went over the Q&A and I looked over it here and basically it, it's saying that um, for people carrying uh, large weights, people towing or trade vehicles, the 4000s, probably the way to go, the, the ones that are drilled and vented. So that's what they're recommending there. The ones I got are not drilled and vented, they're just standard rotors. So I started doing my research and I was looking around saying, okay, well I can get two rotors for $300. I went to super cheap, a place you'd normally expect to see things cheap and I find they're selling one rotor for $122, a single rotor. I got charged $161 for the one rotor. That's not what I'm so concerned about. What I'm more concerned about is how come all of these people are selling rotors singly for the amount that you can buy a twin set for most other places. That's what I want to know. Because even um, Autobahn, they want to sell a single at $134. So that's still cheaper than what I paid and of course if you're going to buy it off somebody else you're going to pay more than what you would from a part supply shop but it just seems unusual that they're charging 130 140 and that seemed to be the range for one rotor and uh, you know you wouldn't expect to be paying you know a lot of money for these type of parts so I added all the things that I, I got from you know which was from that service and it came to about $700 and I thought, well, let's check out the place that they actually get their parts from. Now, this place here, I couldn't get it up on screen, but they quoted me about $170 for the rotor that it, they sold me for $160. So there must be some sort of trade difference, I understand that. Sometimes I would be expecting 10 or 20%, but I think something else is going on because why would they pay $100 and, let's say, $60 to sell it to me for $160? Now, it is... It is true they probably did buy the product from these people and it is true that they would have charged them per rotor and I'm not sure of the exact price but I think something's going on. When I called uh, that company they, they told me you know it's $160, $170. Even when I go you know well this is check this out this is where it really sort of stands out. I can buy two rotors of the same thing for $150. I can buy two of the rear rotor for $170. So I thought to myself, he, he has to be buying at this price and um, he's charged me twice. He's making, you know, doubling his money on, basically on the purchase. And I thought perhaps that's what he's doing. But then when I checked with these people, they, where he actually purchased them from, he was telling me, no, no, they're $170 a rotor. So they've got a walk in off the street price, which is largely inflated. Now, if this is reasonable pricing here for two rotors for 160, how come he's buying them for what the company he's, who supplied him? How come he's telling you know 150, 140? That just doesn't make sense. That's like us as locksmiths buying a um, hundred dollar lock for 150 dollars and then selling it on to our customers. When you buy a wholesale, you, you've got to make that markup, that 30, 40 percent markup. And that's the same price that the customers could buy it for. So that way they see the prices as reasonable. But when I look here, I don't see, I see these prices right here on screen as reasonable. $325 for front and back, left and right, four rotors. I got charged $700. So moving along, I was looking at eBay here and eBay much the same. I could have got the 4000 series, which are the really good ones for, you know, I could have got two sets of them for $700. And that's buying them from eBay. So somebody's buying them cheaper, putting them on eBay, and making a profit. So there's a there is a lot of money to be made if you can get them at the right price. But these people here, they wanted to charge um, 160 per rotor. Now there's no way a mechanic's going to you know pay top dollar when you can get it for half. If people are selling them for half, that's the price they are half somewhere. And if you're in the industry, you're most likely going to be paying half. So these people here are probably making a very small margin doing a lot of turnover but obviously these parts can be acquired for half and i don't know why the other companies like super cheap and um, and bursons and all are really inflating them and selling them as a single item at such a price you know they must be making you know 100 percent on them so that's my debacle i don't i don't know why um there's such a markup on them and i don't know why they're advertising one price and um, why other people can get them for half the price but here's what I did learn because I've got a couple of these cars and they're going to need them you know might, might be 30 might be 50,000 k's from now 
at this price, 325, I'm better off just buying a set, putting it on the shelf. And next time one of the cars go in for service, if it needs brakes and rotors, they can be in the boot. Just put them in the back of the car, and if the mechanic needs them, he can install my ones, which I pay the proper price for, because it's not worth uh, even buying them when you need them from these big authorized sellers. It's just not worth it. You know, they're, they're doing the same thing. They're putting, you know, 70, 80% markup on them, and you can clearly see the prices. This is only one example of the price that I found at a reasonable price. eBay was quite reasonable too, and it's coming in pairs of sets. $180 for a set when he's charged me $190 each. Cut a long story short, if I was to put these on the shelf, I could pretty much save um, save myself three to $400 just by having these parts in stock ready to go. If I never use them and I sell the car, I can put them straight back on eBay and get my money back because they're not gonna go out of stock, they're not gonna go off, there's no expiry date. And here's another place too. You see the price? You know, it's basically half. So instead of being forced to use the mechanic, uh, the mechanic's supply, and when they're supplying them, they're basically displaying it and selling it to you for a price which looks reasonable when you look into it. But then when you find out with the real price, you find out, oh no, geez, they're making, they're making a, a big chunk of change. So when you looked at that invoice and you saw oh, uh, $80 service, that was a bit bogus. You just swapped the oil. But all the other charges, you know, they don't really make much. You only charge for an hour. That's why he dropped the hour down because he was making $400 on that sale just by putting those rotors on. That's why he didn't call me. That's why he didn't give me a choice. He didn't give me a choice of which rotors I wanted. Did I want the end shield or did I want the 4,000? He didn't ask me. He just basically put them on and said, there you go. And this is what I, my point before is that if you're gonna up the bill on somebody and if something needs to be replaced, Tell the customer, don't just spring it on them because it really does give people the shits. I would have gone for the 4000 series and, um, you know, I would have checked the prices before I agreed to anything, just as I did the Bendix brakes. I knew they were about 100 bucks a set and that's pretty much what I got charged. So he didn't make that any money on that, but he certainly um, did stick in a wobbly and uh, get me on the, on the rotors. And when they were already fitted on the car, he asked you to come and pick up the car 10 minutes from closing. What are you going to do? You can't exactly say, no, take these off the car. I didn't want them. So unfortunately, I got stung for the rotors. And um, hindsight's always 2020. So now I will have a set of uh, probably street series for the other vans. I'll have a set just sitting on the shelf. And the brake pads and all the rest you don't need to. But when it comes to like something like this, it's well worth doing your research. Even tires, I've been told of the same things as well huge markup and people don't know what the difference is and what they're buying so these standard rotors here that they're, they're they're good they do a good job but the 4000 series is better and at 187 dollars for two i prefer to pay that than 190 dollars for one so that's how i got stung for 400 bucks or three to four hundred dollars overpriced even if i was to go to super cheap buy all the parts i was quite surprised that they were doing the exact same thing and where the di discrepancy lies is always with the rotors and that's what i found it's it's the rotors they're making out as if they're making a 10 or 20 percent margin and super cheap and you get it for that little bit you know they're making 10 or 20 percent but it's not true they obviously must be making you know a good hundred percent on those rotors and that's with other people that's comparing it to other people who are making 10 or 20 percent on it so who knows how much maybe 120 130 percent now the oil uh, was more expensive to buy in 10 liters than it was in seven liters i could have bought two seven liters which is 14 liters for the price they charge for a 10 liter a little bit strange but you know that's just the way it is that's only small dollars anyway and the oil filter was slightly more expensive and the brake pads were actually cheaper at super cheap but these people here i would have expected them to give a a, a, a trade price i was expecting them to say for a, for one rotor uh probably around about the 60 dollars mark not you know 160 so they've obviously um i'm not sure what they sell it to the mechanic at but i can't understand why the mechanic would buy off them at 160 dollars or 150 and try and sell to me for 10 dollars profit it just doesn't make sense especially when we can see that these parts are available all of them there, $325. I got charged $700. So there is, you know, as a professional in the industry, they must be getting it at a cheaper rate. So do your research, buy yourself some rotors if your brakes are wobbling or they're not feeling right. Remember, they're just like brake pads now, they're softer. Have them sitting on the shelf. 
and ask your mechanic, take a wheel off, measure your disc pads. If he can't machine them and they've got to be replaced, such as my case, tell him to put the wheel back on and you'll come back next week with your own pads and things. That way you can only charge $80 and you can't inflate the price on selling basically marked up products which you can't cross check. So in this case I was able to cross check, a lot of the time they're a little bit more sneaker than this. So do your research, uh, keep it in the back of your mind and I hope it saves you a, a few dollars. Thanks for watching. Oh and one more little tip after this. Okay, one more thing I just want to mention, which is a really good tip for these uh, Hyundai ILOs, is that uh, the diesel models, sorry, the diesel model, uh, where you've got the carbonate filter on the exhaust, which basically, uh, you know, collects more soot and things. Once a month, you actually have to take it for like a two hour drive on an expressway, and you have to get it up to temperature and be doing at least about 100K for it to burn off the particulates in, that collect in that filter. So I drive a lot of city Ks backwards and forwards and I don't always hit the freeways. So it is well worth knowing that you're going to really be clogging up your, uh, your, your, your filters if you don't actually get out there on the freeway and do it. And that can be extremely expensive. So it's cheaper just to go for a two hour run every uh, once a month they say and get up to speed to clean out your diesel motor in these eye loads.